Hello friends, welcome to the course of Code Igniter for RESTful API development using SILT authentication. Inside this video, we'll create our first program inside Code Igniter 4. If I back to editor, so inside last video, we had seen a bit concept about Spark CLI command and also we understood all about our default landing page. Now this time, we'll create our first program inside Code Igniter 4 framework. So first thing first, we need to generate a controller file, then we'll create a route and also we'll bind a view file with our controller's method. So to create controller, we'll use spark cli make controller command. Back to terminal. So I will type php spark, press enter. It will provide the command list of php spark. Now we need to go inside generator section. Here we can see make controller command. Look at its single line description. It generates a new controller file. Let's go back to editor. Go to app controllers. So here we can see that here we have three different controllers called home.php, product.php and sites.php. So I will create one more controller. Let's say service.php. Back to terminal. So php spark make controller and I will type service and also will use a suffix flag which means that it will generate suffix controller.php. If I press enter, now we can see service controller.php file has been created inside controllers folder. Let's go back to editor, go inside controllers folder. And here inside this folder, we can see service controller.php. Inside this controller skeleton, we can see here we have an index method. So inside this index method, we will add a line of code. By the help of that, we will return a view file. So for the time being, if I let's say echo a simplest message, so echo within S3 tag, let's say welcome to API development course. So if I save this change, now if we want to execute this message into browser, first thing first, we need to create a route. So to register route inside this application, we need to go inside config folder. And inside this config folder, we'll find a file called routes.php. So here, I will go and add a route here. So let's say routes, we'll choose get method. And inside get method, first we need to pass from, it means URL. So let's say that the URL will be something called services and it will call service controller. And from service controller, we will call index method. Save these changes. Let's go back to terminal. Remember, inside last video, we have seen a small demo all about the command called php spark routes. So that command actually lists all about the routes what we have inside our application. So I will go and use that PHP Spark routes. Press enter. So inside this tabular format, now we can see we have one more route called services. It is calling service controller and index method. Now next, I will start development server. So PHP Spark serve. Press enter. So as we can see, to access application, we need to open localhost 8080 port. So I will right click on that, click on open link. And as we can see that application is started at this URL. So if we want to access our services page, we need to copy this route, go here, put a forward slash, type it here, services. Now we can see, welcome to API development course. So instead of returning this static message, now we want to return a view file. So what I will do, I will write, let's return. We'll use view helper function and inside this as a value, we need to pass our view file name. So let's say services underscore welcome or simply services. I will copy this value or the name, go inside app folder. Go inside views folder, right click, create a new file called services.php. 
So let's say that inside this PHP file, I will write a simple line of message. Let's say welcome to API development course. So if we save this change, go here, let's reload this page. Now we can see we are getting the same message what we had written inside the services.php. Now if we want to send some value from this controller method to this view file, we can also send that. How to do that? Let's go inside controller and let's say that I want to send this name here. So this is the name. This is let's say a dummy email value and I want that these two values should be accessed inside the services.php. So what I will do inside second value of this view helper function, we can pass array of data. So let's create an array here. Inside this array, let's say name. I will type name. This is the key and this key will be accessed inside our view file and this is the value. So inside second key, let's say email address email if we save these changes so by the help of this name email address we can access these two value inside services.php so go here inside this file let's say that php echo i will write name here and for second value let's put a break tag php echo i will use email address save this change go and reload now we can see that we are getting the name value and also we are getting the email value instead of writing this php we can also use the shorthand operator so to use shorthand operator of php let's remove this php keyword as well as echo equal to sign let's remove the semicolon let's remove echo php put equal to sign Remove the semicolon, save these changes, go and reload. Now we can see we have the same value what we have in the previous. So successfully by using either the PHP symbol or the shorthand operator to write a PHP tag, we have outputted all the values what we had sent from our index method. So successfully, by the help of this video, now we had created our first program for this application. In our coming video, we'll see some more different concepts. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.